Hey, first of all, I want to thank everybody who um, sent me mails with links to web pages and recommendations for books on the Regency era. I really appreciate that, so that was great. And I want to apologize because I'm really, really tired right now because it's so warm. <laughs> I feel like I'm dying. Um, but I want to make this video anyway because I want to tell you about the fabric I'm going to use for my dress. Um, and I'm going to start off with a little quote from the notes in the back of Pride and Prejudice because I think um, they explain the whole thing very well. So this is on page 425 and that explains the term a really new muslin, um, which is a fairly new fabric at the time, a product of Britain's rule in India. Muslin was finely woven cotton, came in a variety of textures and patterns and washed well. The end of the 18th century saw a shift from stiff and richly colored silks to light, thin cottons and linens in white or pale colors and to simple high-waisted dresses inspired by the draperies of classical statues. The muslin in question would be a length of cloth bought to be made up. And I think that explains the whole idea of Regency dress rather well. There's a term um, called muslin disease because apparently only wearing very very thin cotton fabrics like uh, muslin or batiste or very fine silk um, to be fashionable isn't very healthy especially in the English winter so there were other ways of keeping ourselves warm like um, scarves or capes or like here I have a picture Spencers this is a Spencer very short jacket and um, there's also a longer version which was called Pelissé and um, also, I guess for reasons of modesty, I will have to make myself undergarments for this dress <laughs> because the um, fabric I have is rather transparent, so I'm going to need at least one petticoat and I think a chemise as well. So I'm going to do that when I'm finished with the dress. And I have another quote about muslin. <laughs> you have to sit through this because this is my favorite book. I'm sorry. <sighs> they were interrupted by Mrs. Allen. My dear Catherine, said she, do take this pin out of my sleeve. I'm afraid it has torn a hole already. I should be quite sorry if it has, for it is a favorite gown, though it cost but nine shillings a yard. That is exactly what I should have guessed it, madam, said Mr. Tilney, looking at the muslin. Do you understand muslin, sir? Particularly well. I always buy my own cravats, and I am allowed to be an excellent judge, and my sister has often trusted me in the choice of a gown. I bought one for her the other day, and it was pronounced to be a prodigious bargain by every lady who saw it. I gave but five shillings a yard for it, and a true Indian muslin. Mrs. Allen was quite struck by his genius. Men commonly take so little notice of those things, said she. I can never get Mr. Allen to know one of my gowns from another. You must be a great comfort to your sister, sir. I hope I am, madam. And pray, sir, what do you think of Miss Morland's gown? It is very pretty, madam, said he, gravely examining it. But I do not think it will wash well. I am afraid it will fray. How can you, said Catherine, laughing, be so, she had almost said, strange. I am quite of your opinion, sir, replied Mrs. Allen, and I told Miss Morland so when, and, and so I told Miss Morland when she bought it. But then you know, madam, muslins always turn out to some account or other. Miss Morland will get enough out of it for a handkerchief or a cap or a cloak. Muslin can never be said to be wasted. I have heard my sister say so forty times when she has been extravagant in buying more than she wanted, or careless in cutting it to pieces. I really like this part, because Mrs. Ellen is so fashionable and cares about her dresses only. <laughs> After all this talk about muslin, I'm going to show you the fabric that I'm going to use that is ironically not muslin, because I couldn't find any um, but this fabric came, came to me by fate. <laughs> I'm not kidding here. This is it. Um, as you can see, it has this pattern that's embroidered. I can't pronounce it. I'm going to use subtitles here. Um, so it's 
kind of transparent and it's not plain white because in, in very white white I look like a ghost and yeah it's Batiste which is an, a good alternative to muslin and um, I just found it on a table in the store and it was like 75% off and I had to have it because um, this is three meters and because it was all that was left I got a discount and three meters would have cost 45 euros and I got it for 10 so I had to have it and I've already washed it because you should always wash cotton fabrics before you use them because sometimes they change size a little when you wash them after you've worked with them and made a dress and then they change size <laughs> And then you regret not washing it before, so I already did that this time. And I think it will be enough for one dress because it's going to be only one layer. But I'm going to explain that later when I'm making the pattern. So, and I think that's it. The next, the next video will, will be about the pattern and I hope then I won't be a sleepwalker anymore. Bye!